All right, so here he is, the killer gorilla, longtime middleweight contender, Jared Cannonier. And how do you assess the career to this point in time? Well, only two guys to beat him in the last five or six years, Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. So most of the fights, like this one tonight, that Jared Cannonier is expected to win, he has held serve and done just that. If there has been any knock on Cannonier, it's that his game just hasn't been quite a lead enough when the challenges have been the guys at the top of the division. But Cannoneer is world class. He has realized success in three different UFC divisions. And even though he's coming up on 40, don't let the age fool you. That's just a number. This guy looks a whole lot better with his shirt off than me. with his mind set on one thing tonight, that UFC championship belt. So here's the undisputed UFC lightweight champion and one of the very best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, Islam Makhachev. He trained alongside this man for years. He has every skill in the book. And the X Factor tonight is that has been on his career. Yeah, that's one of his, his brothers is what they call him. Islam Makhachev, though, is the guy that really does strike fear in so many lightweights' minds. He's a guy that possesses wrestling ability. He's a guy that possesses striking ability. The grappling is second to none. And just his size and physicality is so difficult to deal with. He is a tremendous fighter, and he will be pushed even more forward with the presence of his good friend, Hasbula. You do wonder, though, if the opposing corner is a little bit intimidated given Hasbula's presence <laughs> in the Makashev corner. Islam Makashev. He is ready to go. That means so are we for our main event of the evening. And now our tail of the tape for this welterweight championship fight. All right, we send it back inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC welterweight championship of the world. This is the first fighting out of the blue corner. Presenting the challenger, Jared the Killer Gorilla, Cannoneer. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC welterweight champion of the world, Islam. Herb Dean, our third man in the octagon for this one. Dateline Anaheim, California, USA. We are inside Honda Center where women were ushered into the UFC in this very building back in 2013. In this very building, you understood how big a star Ryan Rossi was. But this place was as loud as it's ever been. Can you get the crowd on their feet tonight as Ronda Rousey did way back when Ronda Rousey made that walk in the UFC 157, truly a sports moment where most people remember exactly where they were. You will never forget the moment you saw Ronda hit the curtain in Anaheim. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Look at that. Recognize he's about to lose position. Are right, working on the ground here. His opponent's feet on the hips. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pat. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Just over three minutes to go. <laughs> All right. 
right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Islam Makasha. <laughs> Well, nothing in the unified rule says you can't strike from off of your back, and he did well there. Cannoneer getting absolutely worked from the top here on the wrong end of nearly all of these ground and pound strikes. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, to the mouth. Makashev's trying to get a triangle here. That is tight. Oh, so how about that? The offensive fighter bails on the submission now. Very smart. You gotta keep position over submission. You gotta start throwing now. Under a minute to go. Oh, big shots from the top. Oh, another strike lands from the top. Well, this is exactly what you like to see. Nice combination of ground and pound punches. Outstanding pressure and activity by Islam Akasha. Posture's up now. Oh, and delivers. Huge punch to the head there. Again, not much defense there. Another ground strike gets through. That horn sounds means we have reached the end of round one. All right, let's look back at some of the action in that round, DC. What a high-level display of offensive wrestling. I mean, this is a joy for me to watch. I enjoy watching a guy maintain this level of wrestling for as long as he has done this. He is constantly in his opponent's face. He's constantly taking him down. Getting taken down and getting up is exhausting. Let's see how tired his opponent is at the start of the next round. Nakasha gets caught by that straight punch. Can't take too many more of those. Glancing right hand lands upstairs. Awesome level change. Great timing. Nice takedown. There you go. Oh, good movement to avoid that strike from the top. Well, working pretty effectively from the top here. Nice ground and pound by Islam Akasha. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Oh, that Kimura looks tight. You gotta be kidding me, how did he get out? He just stayed calm, he was able to withstand the fire, and now he finds himself out and safe. Well, his superior grappling has certainly been the lead narrative in this one. The takedowns, the ground control, he's got it all going tonight. All right, he continues to bully his opponent here, really manhandling him on the ground. Excellent pressure here from top position by Islam Makasha. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Makashev's back in full mount. This is a terrible position. Just over two minutes now to go. shot from the top position. Makashev's going for a choke. Oh, looks like he's got that arm pin in the triangle now. Oh, he's got the knee on the belly. Could be trouble defensively. This is some exhausting work, man. I mean, it is so tiring to be fighting in this way. 
so much wrestling, so much grappling, expending all this energy trying to hold the guy down. I mean, it, 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 no takedown is not fought. No reversal is not fought. Everything they're doing is fought to the very last minute before it gets given up. Oh, he lands another takedown here, just doing a nice job, not telegraphing his shot, clean entries. The Olympian's got a lot. Ooh, he's setting up another submission now. Oh, I'm no expert, but that Von Flute choke looks locked in. Ooh, flips the switch as he changed the submission attempt. He jumps right to the opposite side, trying to get the on track. Right to the on belly. And the horn sounds on round two. So there's the end of the round. The storyline over those previous five minutes, volume takedowns, offensive wrestling. Yeah, this is an exhausting type of fight, not only for the offensive fighter, but also for the opponent. Always being under attack, always being defensive, always reacting starts to really wear at your gas tank. It's interesting to see who is more fresh going into the next round. Well, that'll fly Blow right there, DC. He's rocked. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly, and it hurt his opponent very bad. These two guys are trading huge shots. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. All right, what do you think? Another takedown attempt here. It seems like every time he's gone to the well, it's been there tonight. When you're that successful with any one thing, why would you change it? He's going to shoot for another takedown, and I would almost be willing to bet he's going to secure it. I'll take your action. Okay. Now with the knee. That's a perfect scramble right there. Beautiful transition. Straight right is there. It won't take many of those. There it is yet again. He goes for the takedown, and it's there. Oh, he's got his back. He's got to get him in the air. Makashev's got to cut him. And now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it. He not. And now he's got to hurt back. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. Makashev's back in half guard, very comfortable here. Now he's going full mount. All right, so he's setting up for submission here. Oh, it's getting deep. Oh, that has got to be it. Yeah, Paige and Alexio Lennox. Somehow he got out, though. Great job clearing the hips, facing, and getting out of that Ezekiel choke attempt. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Push off an elbow. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been opened up in that eye area. Yeah, he's got hit in the eye, and now there's a cut. But it's nothing to worry about too much now. But he's got to be very careful with it as we go forward. Beautiful ground strikes landed. He's brutalizing him with the ground and pound. This fight is close to being done. Makashev's back inside control here. Great defense by the defensive fighter. That's three rounds. We're now headed to the championship rounds. All right, good news is the round is over. Bad news. Makashev's bleeding pretty bad from the forehead here. Hopefully the cut man can nip that in the bud and make sure that that blood doesn't trickle down into his eyes as the next round begins. All right, we will now re-rack some of the highlights for you from that previous round. We'll try to find the shot that caused the cut above his eye that is now leaking significantly down and compromising his vision. Yep, there it is. The one that landed 
that really opened him up. That cut is in a bad spot, too. Yeah. Right over the eye. So that blood Ready, starts to leak down. Ready. It starts to really impair the vision. It's going to be on his opponent to try and circle away from the power while not going in to circle away from the power to allow for himself to have a chance to still win this fight. Yeah, still plenty of time with which to rally, but we will keep a close eye on that cut above his eye. All his wrestling has been a great equalizer thus far in his UFC career and gets the single leg takedown. And you know that it's his shot. It's his shot of choice, a single leg takedown, and he's securing it, and he's doing it and scored it over and over again. Chefs in half court. Great job landing from the top position. Oh, right into Mount. Continuing to stay busy here on the ground. Well, this is not football. Targeting is legal, and he is going at that cut, which is getting worse with every passing ground strike. Oh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Oh, look out, folks. That is tight. It looks like it's getting going. Oh, he bails on the submission now. Nice transition. Islam Akashev ground and pound from half guard now. Pretty good work with the strike there from bottom position. Continues to apply pressure here in half guard. Close guard here. He's very comfortable here working off of his back, DC. Makashev's back in half guard. Oh, look at that. High level grappling as the fighter reverses position and attains a dominant position. Are working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Makashev's back in full mount. He set up a beautiful submission. Oh, good technique there. He's got the triangle choke locked in. Oh, how good is that as he gets out? That is great submission defense, keeping everything short and not allowing his opponent to get the submission victory. Oh, he just continues to attack that cut around the eye. Gotta think his vision's compromised now. As he should, right? He sees the blood pouring into his opponent's eyes. His opponent now is squinting, trying to maintain his line of sight. He has got to continue to go at that cut right now. Lands a huge right hand. Oh, big elbow. All right, he'll engage in a single oh, oh. tie. 20 minutes down, potentially five to go. All right, listen, that was a great round. This round, I don't want you playing in his guard. I want you to pass his guard. I want you to get full side control position. He has no answer for you from side control. Ready. Ready. Good. We have arrived at this fifth and final round. Cannoneer's overhand punch to the head doesn't get to the target. He telegraphed that one and it gets blocked. He does a great job of getting that leg kick to the target. Again, going back to the jab just out of range. Beautiful level change. Awesome take. Oh, and he moves into half guard. The guard pass is starting to pile up. Right away, take the far side underhook. Look for damage from the top to come now. Makashev's back in half guard. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous. Oh, he's stepping over the head here. 
Looks to me like he's got that submission close. Starting to get deep. Looks like he's going to get the finish. Well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You got to figure out a way to get back to your feet. All right, well, that blow is busting from that cut with each strike landed, and he continues to effectively target that area. You know, we are talking about a guy with a super high fight IQ. So when you give him that blood, that crimson red is nothing more than something that inspires him to continue doing what he's doing. So you have got to change something. You got to get your head moving so you're not taking too much damage to that cut. Great job finding his shots from the top position. And now he's got the back. Oh, he reversed position there. Oh, how about it? Just with the doctor ordered, he gets back to the feet. John, it's like a Hail Mary. He needed to get up to his feet to give himself an opportunity. He got there. Now let's see if he can cash in. Trouble now. That was Cain Velasquez's punch of choice. Every time he landed that overhand right, he hurt people bad. And this guy has his opponent hurt very badly again. Oh, that, hurt. that hurt bad. All right, so maybe he goes for another takedown here, and it's the setups too, right? He's not blindly shooting from the outside. Maybe he'll get him down again. He's doing a fantastic job of setting up the takedown with his hands. He's forcing the hands up around to block his face, and then he's dropping his level, shooting his shot. And ultimately, because he's such a great submission guy, no matter how the fight gets to the floor, he just needs to get it. official decision is in it resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 49-46, 50-44, and 50-45. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision and still the undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world is Mark All right, so there he is. He came in the hunted. He remains as such. Congrats to the still UFC welterweight champion. Big effort out of the incumbent here tonight. He has so much pride in being the UFC champion, and you see it in the effort that he puts in retaining his title. One of the best welterweight champions in UFC history.